to answer any questions that you may have. Well, I'm back on the shore today, and again I'm fishing the Bombarda, same as the uh, previous shore fishing video that I did. And the only difference today is I've scaled down on the size of my rod. I'm fishing an 8 foot rod rather than my 11 foot rod. And what's the reason for that? Well, my 11 foot rod is a bit heavy and you know any more than a sort of couple of hours uh, it gets a bit tiresome at the end of the day. So I decided to scale down my rod. It's exactly the same. The only difference being is I've got a shorter rod. Same reel, 1000 size, pen battle 3, loaded with braid. I did say in the previous video that you know I like to fish a long leader and I do like to fish a long leader so I'm fishing as long a leader that I can get away with that's comfortable to cast. So I've got approximately 9 foot fluorocarbon leader, 8 pound and fishing a multitude of different lures. Uh, this is the one I got the last sea trout on in the last video and that's one of the reasons why I like to use the Bombarda as you can cast a long distance and you can cast really light lures, you know, almost like flies. If you didn't see that video guys, uh, check it out, I'll put a link up above and you can have a look at that at your own discretion if you feel like watching it. So I've actually just finished a morning session, early morning session. I started uh, just after 4am this morning and had a pretty good session I thought. Uh, targeting bass again and yeah a few fish. Anyway guys I hope you enjoy this video and as usual leave your comments, questions, any questions you have I'm only too happy to answer them. I hope you enjoy the video and let's see how we got on. Right guys, first cast of the morning. Now there's loads of mackerel about this morning. They're bubbling about everywhere. So now we're to high tide, back at the same venue. And I'm trying this little lure this morning. It's a little bit more weighted. That's a fish. I think it's a mackerel. Yeah, little mackerel. That's off. It's about quarter past four in the morning 
and I thought I would just try back at this mark at high tide I would have prepared more of the inflow and tide but I would have been fishing in complete darkness and that would have been much fun on camera fishing in the dark fishing a bombarda again determined to get this bass I would have preferred uh, there was a mackerel chasing that in <laughs> would have preferred a little bit of breeze but that's fishing That's another fish. I think it's a mackerel. Must be a tiny one. Yeah. Little Mackey. Perfect live bait size. <laughs> Whenever you see this weed, <laughs> it's just strewn through the the narrows here. I'll just wait till it passes, as there's quite a bit of it. So obviously the tide's come in through the gear lock and let's say it's almost high tide and it's just swirling around in the bays. Hopefully it's not going to cause too much of a problem. And you can see it. I don't know if you can pick it up in camera but it's all along there. Oh, fish on. I think it's a mackerel, guys. It's just a little one, I think. Yep. Little oh, Joey. Good fun, all the same. I wish I'd brought a bag actually, I would have kept a few of them for bait for my next sea fishing adventure which I'm hoping might be for taupe I 
if I can get the weather for the kayak. So as you can see, I'm casting in straight into the breeze and I can still turn that fly or that lure over, no problem. <clears throat> in fact, you can see the lure splashing behind the bombarder, you know, when you put the brakes on. I've just changed lures guys, I'll show you when I bring it in, I've just cast out Same pattern of lure, but I put on a chartreuse or green and white Just a little bit brighter, just to see And if I get nothing with that, so that's the lure, green and white. If I get no hits with this, any interest, then I'll definitely go back to the sand deal pattern that I've obviously had success in the past with. Just seen one or two sea trout jumping clear of the water, just small ones. Not that I'm after that. Hoping for bass cruising about in this bay here. That was a take, right? <laughs> 20 feet, and I think it's a little sea trout. Uh, I can't see it yet. Yeah, a little sea trout. Oh, the colour of the lure certainly worked. Second cast. Come on. It's not a bad fish actually. Yeah, no bad fish. <laughs> Flies right in the scissors, or lure right in the scissors.
yeah, he's just over a pound. A pound and a quarter, almost touching a pound and a half. Stunning little fish. It's still a little bit dark, he's probably not long in the estuary. We'll get this guy back. Let him recover. That was a superb take, literally 15 feet. This is about to lift the, the lure out. I thought I'd give it one last jerk and wham. That was a not bad fish, worth getting up in the morning for. Not the bass, but fish is a fish. And the main thing is, it went back to... <clears throat> the main thing is, it went back to fight another day. A little bit brighter colour certainly had the desired effect. I'll try and find uh, what type of lure this is. I think it's made by Fool and Mill. I'm not 100%. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll reset. I've had it for about six or seven years, these. Had the set of four. Like I said, had red and white, blue and white, brown and white, and this green and white. Uh, positive, it's made by Fool and Mill. I just want to say, I don't think I've ever had a sea trout at distance, you know, casting out as far as I can when you stop the bombarder and you start the retrieve. I don't think I've ever had a sea trout, or a bass for that matter, at the end of my cast, which is encouraging for guys that are maybe not the best at casting. that you don't always need to cast a thousand miles, you know. So I think I'll try this sandy pattern. A little bit green, a little bit blue. Should do the trick. As usual guys, a little uh, non-slip loop knot just for a little bit of articulation in the water rather than being hard tied to your line which is just going to follow your line. Let's see if this can produce
Yeah, that lure's working nicely. I just felt that other lure was a bit, a bit too sort of splayed out in the water rather than streamlined. Maybe that sea trout damaged it or something. So what I actually liked about that other lure that got, I got the sea trout on is it's a bit weighted, so it, it you know it will stay down. Maybe no matter sort of how fast you wind, it's going to be like a foot under the surface. Where if you've got a lighter lure, if your bombarder's going along the surface, it's pretty much going to be near the surface. Fish. Uh, I think it's a mackerel. <laughs> Tiny mackerel. Another macro guys. So guys, if you didn't see my first video, uh, fishing the Bombarda, what I'll do is I'll just go through how I fish it, how I cast it, uh, which is probably the most important thing, is the casting. Because uh, if you don't get the casting right, then everything that follows is not going to work. So, obviously Bombarda, uh, it's near the tip of my rod and I've got about a two foot section of 13 pound fluorocarbon and my leader is about eight and a half foot long and today I'm fishing with an eight foot rod so that's probably my comfortable casting limit in terms of leader. If you go any longer it'll be quite difficult to cast with a shorter rod and that's one of the reasons why I do like a longer rod because I can fish a really long leader. And then obviously the leader coming down to my lure or fly. And in this case I'm using a little sandy old pattern fly which is tied on with a little non-slip loop knot. Uh, the, the leader that I'm using is eight pound fluorocarbon. So a little bit of protection, like I said, braid on my reel up to my 13 pound fluoro 
which gives the protection for casting and then through the bombarder onto a small swivel. So for casting, you don't want to you don't want to cast in too high a trajectory because the bombarder's going to come down and you're not going to get the the turnover of your lure properly. So you want a sort of low trajectory so that when you put the brakes on, i.e. you're going to stop the bombarder travelling through the air, and when you do that, that makes the lure turn over and land behind the bombarder. If you didn't do that and you cast out, the lure is just going to follow the bombarder and it's just going to all land on top of the bombarder and it's going to end up like a right snake's wedding. And you're going to end up with tangles, wind knots in your line. And obviously when you retrieve that, it's going to be, it's not going to be right. Your lure's not going to be working properly. So that's the importance that you stop the lure just before it hits the water so that that lure turns over behind the bombarder. So cast out, low trajectory, stop it, lure lands behind the bombarder. And because I'm fishing braid, which is obviously a lot lighter than uh, mono or fluoro, because you're stopping it as well, it takes all the looseness out of that braid, which can prevent, obviously, wind knots in your braid as well, and tangles. And then you just <coughs> alter the retrieves, whatever you think is going to work. You can do fast, slow, uh, occasional jerks, jerk all the time, whatever, whatever you think works. And you can just change it up all the time. Don't just stick to casting, wind, uh, jig, jig, and that's it. You know, next time you cast out, a bit faster, a bit more jigging into it, do a straight retrieve at speed, straight retrieve slow. So I'll try and show that again. So cast out, low trajectory, stop the bombarder, lure lands behind the, the bombarder. And because I'm fishing with a sinking bombarder, I'm just going to allow it to sink for maybe seven seconds. And you can obviously alter the depth, let it sink a bit longer, fish it near the surface. It's totally up to you guys on whatever your fishing situation is or venue and then just work that work that lure the faster you work the bombarder the closer it's going to come to the surface it's just the way it's designed it's going to come to the surface so you just decide what you think now when a bombarder does come to the surface if there's a bit of breeze on the water which gives you overhead cover for the fish uh, it doesn't matter too much, but when you're fishing and it's a bit like this and it's like a mirror you don't really want the bombarder to splash all over the surface uh, as it's going to spook some fish other times it can actually entice a fish to have a look because 